The Skywalker Saga sucks. Only a few days ago, the new LEGO Star Wars Skywalker game came out, and I gotta say, it has underperformed my expectations, which were already very low. Now, at no point did I ever even intend to do a soft style review on a game I haven't even made to the halfway point in the story. As far as I'm aware, I've played enough to have a solid understanding how I'm gonna feel about the rest of this journey. I really do not recall the timeline, because it feels like it's been almost three years since the game was first announced for its initial release and then delayed over and over and over. And in all that potential time, I have gone back and forth on whether or not I wanna get it. On the one hand, I don't really like LEGO games, and I played them a lot when I was younger, but now that I'm not younger and they're not really made for my age demographic, I don't care for it. But on the other hand, LEGO Star Wars is back, baby! But in all honesty, while I was playing this new game, the only thing I could think of is, man, I'd rather be playing a complete saga, or LEGO Star Wars, or LEGO Star Wars 2, or even the Clone Wars. Just for clarity, my experience has been on the Switch version, which I understand is the weakest of all of the platforms out there that you can play it on. And I'm, I get that, but I still feel like it should be able to run a LEGO game rather smoothly, which it cannot. This leads us into our first of many problems that I've had with us thus far. Glitches and crashes, they are uh, rather prevalent. Now I understand this is gonna take the credibility away from my words in this review. However, I, gotta, I, I wanna be honest, I haven't made it through the first movie yet. We started with Phantom Menace because why would any other monster start in any other trilogy? And I'm not feeling it. The very first level, which I'm not even sure is a level or a hub world, it's very confusing between the two of them, uh, it immediately crashed. Like two minutes into the game, it crashed. It, oftentimes it's pretty harmless, like a fish clipping through a, a wall in the Gungan City, or ships uh, clipped into the side of landscapes or buildings when they land. Maybe this could be thrown up to the Switch's lackluster hardware in comparison to the other big dogs, but I've seen some reports that there are some rather common glitches, or just faulty ways the game has been programmed out, like climbing, has, it, it's not good. Anytime you try to climb, you just fly off the map somewhere else, or the climbing apparatus don't appear. These aren't really that big of a deal, they kind of take you out of the, the game itself, but you can work through them. It's a little bit harder when you can't see what you're working through. As far as I'm aware, LEGO video games really focus on co-op. Not a lot of talk surrounding the game for many of the developers uh, had much to do with the co-op aspect of it, which is a little bit worrying, but seeing since all other LEGO games are co-op and pretty good at it, not too much to worry about. Unfortunately, the other games uh, had a different style, whether it be just the straight horizontal line or a line that rotates around the screen when you get too far away from each other, both work in their own way, the current one does not. Skywalker Saga has a vertical line for its split screen, and with their third person, first person point of view perspective of the characters, it's very disorientating. It's just hard to see what's going on because you have such a narrow frame of view. And it's not that I have a small TV, it's just that the way it's chopped up isn't it conducive to playing a game. That's why with seemingly every other game that has a split screen co-op mode, there's a horizontal line so you have a wider field of view and you're not in this little narrow box and you, you're not getting the whole picture there. As far as this review goes, it's more so to do with the co-op aspect than first player because I did see the first person perspective just for a few moments and it was significantly better and probably makes the rest of my gripes with the game null and void but seeing since I'm giving it my experience at playing split screen, I, I, I don't like it. I also don't care for how the rendering is and how if you walk too fast, characters just don't load in properly. I can't explore these massive hub worlds too quickly, otherwise the whole game around me turns into just giant polygons that are just moving side to side like sand crabs. And it's not just the hub world that the Switch has trouble rendering. Also the cutscenes. Many a times the mouths don't sync up with the audio and I don't know if that's a creative decisioning or it just can't keep up with the two things going on at the same time and one just slowly lags behind the other. Another issue that's probably directly contributed by the Switch is the abhorrent load times and now you just have to sit there and think, wow, if this were any other game, I'd already be playing it by now. One of the few things I saw the marketing talk about in terms of co-op is that one person could be running around Coruscant while another person goes into the Jedi Temple and you can be as far away from each other as you want as long as you're on the same planet, except you can't. Because when one person goes into a building, this whole big loading screen takes up the entire page and it stops both of you instead of just the one person. At that point, you should have just tied each other like they were originally in the first LEGO games. When LEGO Lord of the Rings came out, you had to traverse 
the giant middle map that was Middle Earth to get to the next level, like you were actually in Lord of the Rings, traversing from one location to the next. And they do replicate that here with the Skywalker game, but it's not balanced with the levels. They spent so much time on the hub worlds making them as big and grandiose and explorable and trying to find collectibles around every other corner, it feels like the levels were just almost forgotten about in their entirety. In the Lord of the Rings game, it felt like you spent about half of your time traversing around the world and the other half playing in the level. In the new Skywalker game, it feels like you're spending about 80% of your time running around the hub world trying to figure out what to do, and 5% of the time playing the actual level. The remaining 15% is rebooting and waiting for it to load. My negativity on how short the levels are might soften over time as I play the game more, but as of right now, with the hub worlds being the main focus, and them not either loading properly, or glitching out, or crashing, or I can't even see it because the field of view is nothing, I don't see that changing all that much in the future.